ಕದಾಂತಿಕ ವಂದೇಹಂ ಶ್ರೀಗುರು ಶ್ರೀಯುತ ಪದಕಮಲ ಶ್ರೀಗುರು ವೈಷ್ಣವಾಂಶ ಶ್ರೀರೂಪ ಸಾಗರ ಜಾತ ಸಹಗನ ರಘುನಾಥ ತಂ ಸಜೀವ ಸಾಧ್ವೈತ ಸಾವದೂತ ಪರಿಜನ ಸಹಿತ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ದೇವ ಶ್ರೀರಾಧ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಪದ ಸಹಗನ ಲಲಿತ ಶ್ರೀ ವಿಶಾಖಾಂಶ ನಮ ಓಂ ವಿಷ್ಣು ಪದ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಪ್ರೇಷ್ಠಾ ಭೂತಲೆ ಶ್ರೀಮತೆ ಭಕ್ತಿ ವೇದಾಂತ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ನಾಮಿನೆ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಸಾರಸ್ವತೆ ದೇವೆ ಗೌರವಾಣಿ ಪ್ರಚಾರಣೆ ನಿರ್ವಿಶೇಷ ಶೂನ್ಯವಾದಿ ಪಾಶ್ಚಾತ್ಯ ದೇಶ ತಾರಿಣಿ ಹೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಕರುಣಾ ಸಿಂಧು ದೀನ ಬಂಧು ಜಗತ್ಪತೆ ಗೋಪೇಶ ಗೋಪಿಕಾ ಕಾಂತ ರಾಧಾ ಕಾಂತ ನಮಸ್ತುತೆ ತಪ್ತ ಕಾಂಚನ ಗೌರಾಂಗಿ ರಾಧೆ ವೃಂದಾವನೇಶ್ವರಿ ವೃಷಭಾನು ಸುತೆ ದೇವಿ ಪ್ರಣಮಿ ಹರಿ ಪ್ರಿಯ ವಾಂಚಾಕಲ್ಪತರುಭ್ಯ ಕೃಪಾ ಸಿಂಧು ಪತೀತೇಭ್ಯೋ ವೈಷ್ಣವೇಭ್ಯೋ ನಮೋ ನಮ ಜೈ ಶ್ರೀ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಪ್ರಭು ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಶ್ರೀ ಅದ್ವೈತ ಗಧಾಧರ್ ಶ್ರೀವಾಸಿ ಗೌರಭಕ್ತ ವೃಂದ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೇ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಸೊ ವೆಲ್ಕಮ್ ಟು ದ ಶ್ರೀ ಹರಿ ನಾಮ್ ಸೀರೀಸ್ ಡಿಸ್ಕಶನ್ ಆನ್ ದ ಹೋಲಿ ನೇಮ್ ಭಕ್ತ ಠಾಕೂರ್ ಎಸ್ಸೇ ಇಸ್ ಬೇಸ್ಡ್ ಆನ್ how to chant the holy name without offenses and up till now what we have seen is that jiva is caught in maya and only by the lord's mercy he can come out from the clutches of maya and the mercy is in three forms karma gyana bhakti and karma is futile gyana is futile bhakti na thakur establishes and bhakti is the only way we where we can attain the mercy of the lord bhakti means <clears throat> sadhana which is the navvida bhakti and especially hearing chanting remembering and among them the most important is hearing and hearing the holy names so <clears throat> what is naam naam tatva uh, we discussed in two classes and anyone who is not experiencing the symptoms <clears throat> of the ashta satvik vikar while taking the name then he is not taking the name he is taking either nama bhas or nama prad so then bhakti no thakur goes into what are these offenses to the holy name and in the last class we discuss the first offense to the holy name that is sadhu ninda so i'll just recap what we discussed in the first class of sadhu ninda it was a very very important topic <clears throat> and we had quite a elaborate discussion on it <clears throat> uh bhakti chakur mentions uh, the 10 offenses and then he goes on to <clears throat> uh that when we don't respect sadhus we show <clears throat> lack of faith that lack of respect is lack of faith that means we are committing offense to lord hari's name and uh, one who is not of a good character one can you know <clears throat> serve him uh, offer respects but he need not associate with him that is very clear and <clears throat> this propensity uh one was taken shelter of the holy name to dishonor vaishnava should be completely given up that is we have to never offend the vaishnavas and we in this context spoke about the mad elephant offense and taksha's case is the extreme case which is there in the bhagavatam in the fourth canto discussed how diksha offended shiva later on he was beheaded he was given a goat head 
he asked forgiveness from Shiva, but still that propensity, the sinful offensive, not the, the offensive reaction uh, did not go away. And he again committed in his next life, in a Kshatriya body, he committed offense to Narada because although he asked forgiveness, Shama, but he did not get the Anugra of Shiva. <clears throat> So there is difference between Shama and Anugra. And although he had the darshan of the Lord, neither the Lord blessed him with pure devotion, nor did Daksha ask for pure devotion. So this is the gravity of offense. Atayev sadhugare prati shraddha karay nitanta vaksha. It is essential to be respectful towards saintly devotees. And this is quite an elaborate topic uh, which we discuss uh, in the Vaishnava Ninda series about what is Vaishnava and what constitutes Vaishnava Aparad? What constitutes Vaishnava Aparad? So now today we will look into the second offense to the holy name. Bhagavan Haite Shivadi Devake Bhinna Gyan Kara Ekati Hari Nam Aparadera Made Ganya Hoyache. To consider Shiva and other demigods to be independent of the Supreme Personality of Godhead has been counted as an offense to the holy name of Lord Hari. So, to consider Shiva, <coughs> Shiva Adi it is mentioned. Shiva because he is the greatest among all the devas. He is Mahadeva. And there are other demigods. <coughs> You know, in fact, although Shiva is born from Brahma, Shiva is superior. And Vaishnavanam Yata Shambhu. To consider them independent of the Supreme Personality Godhead is counted as an offense to the Holy Name. Now there's a footnote. Meaning that he is unraveled. The Vedic scriptures are monotheistic. The Vedic scriptures don't speak about polytheism, that there are many gods. No, there is only one god. Mm. And the others, they are actually the demigods. They are the demigods. So the Vedic scriptures are very, very clear about it. In fact, uh, our Gaudiya version of philosophy is uh, not monotheism. It is bi-monotheism. <laughs> we just don't worship uh, God. We worship God in his form as Radha and Krishna. So we are bi-monotheistic in one sense. <laughs> Bhagavat Tattva Eka O Advitiya. The Supreme Personality of Godhead is one and without a second. So is ad, Advayam, Advayam Gyan, you know, we say he is one yeah. without any, you know, competitor to him. There is only one God. <laughs> Bhagavan Vishnu Haite Shivadi Devatara Swatantra Satanoi. Shiva and other demigods do not have an existence independent of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Because every demigod, be it even all the expansion, they all come from Krishna. So there is no independent existence of you know the demigods, uh, independent of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Now, please hear this footnote very, very Carefully. Yeah. Bhakti Sandarbha Anucheda 265 quotes from Bhagavad Gita 1041. Srimad Bhagavatam 106837, 32 and 232, 2632 to establish this very point that there is only one and the devtas don't have independent existence. Here, the common features of Lord Shiva and the demigods headed by Lord Brahma are taken into consideration. Shivadi Devata Devata Ganake Bhagavane Ragunavatar Atva Bhagavat Bhakta Boliya Samman Karila or Bhed Gyan Thake Na. If one honors Shiva and the other demigods are Gunavatars, so there are the Guna Avatars. We know that. Brahma is also Guna Avatar. So if one honors them as the Guna Avatars of the Lord, of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, or as devotees of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, all the demigods are also devotees 
of the Supreme Personator, there is no longer a conception of them being independent of him. So this is how we have to see the demigods. And Jeev Goswami in the Bhakti Sandarbhas elaborates quite in detail, especially quoting from the Bhagavad Gita 10 chapter Vibhuti Yoga. And there it is in quite detail. I'll just briefly discuss that. He mentions that one should see the demigods as the Gunavatars or as the devotees of the Supreme Personality of Godhead or as the Adishthan. The Adishthan means Adishthan means that in the heart of the demigods, <clears throat> you know, Krishna is residing. They are like Adishthan. So these are the three ways we need to see that <clears throat> they are <clears throat> part of the Vibhuti Yoga of the Lord. So Vibhuti Yoga means, you know, you know Krishna in the 10th chapter is speaking about the Vibhuti Yoga. <clears throat> And he is also speaking how, you know, uh, among the you know, wind gods, I am Marut. Because Marut is the most powerful among the devata, among the wind gods. So like that, Aditya Nam Aham Vishnur, among the uh, Rishis, I am so, so many Vibhutis. All they are Vibhutis of the Lord or the Gunavatars, like Lord Shiva and Lord Brahma are Gunavatars. Or we should see them as the devotees of Supreme Personality of Godhead or as Adishtan. Of demigods, Krishna is like the person. And Uttamadhikari or Mahabhavad, you know, it is mentioned Uttamahan Hoya Nira Abhiman because he is Uttamadhikari. He has no abhiman. He is prideless. He is very humble. <clears throat> Sakala jiva kare samman jani krishna dishtan. He offers respect to every living being. Not only to devotees. To every living being. Jani krishna dishtan. Knowing that Krishna in the form of super soul resides in everyone's heart. <laughs> So this is the vision of a Mahabhagavat or a Uttamadhika. So these are the three ways uh, we should uh, see the demigods. Bhaktana Thakur is speaking about two ways here as Gunavatars or as devotees. And I mentioned the third one that is Adishtan. Yahara Mahadeveke Ekati Pratak Devata Boliya Shiva O Vishnu Puja Karena Tahara Mahadevara Bhavata Svikar those who consider Mahadev to be an independent deity and worship Shiva and Vishnu do not accept Mahadev's opulent status. So Mahadev also worships Vishnu. We worship the greatest of the Vaishnavas. Just like we worship the spiritual master who is the pure devotee of the Lord. As good as the Supreme Person for it. Sakshat Haritvena. It will come now in the third offense, which we will be discussing soon. So we can worship Shiva as the greatest of the Vaishnavas, and we see Shiva as the Gun Avatar. But especially for Gaudiya Vaishnavas, we should worship him as the greatest of the Vaishnavas because he can free us from Ahankar. And that's why in Jagannath Puri, in Navdi, in uh, Shiva is there to bless the devotees uh, and he comes to the devotees in Dham. He is a Shetrapal. So one who doesn't consider this and he worships Shiva independently, Pratakta Devata Bolia, then he doesn't accept Mahadev's opulent status and he actually commits an offense. Tahate Tahara Vishnu or Shiva Ubera Prati Aparadi Han. Not only he commits offense to Shiva, but to both Vishnu. Thus, they both, thus they become offenders to both Vishnu and Shiva. Now, this footnote is very interesting. Reading Lord Shiva, Swami states the following in his Lagu Bhagavatam Ritha. What Jeeva Visheshatvam Harisuptam Videva 
तत्तु शेषवत एवस्ताम तद अंशत्वेन कीर्तनात सदाशिव इज द सोर्स ऑफ हिज एम्पावर्ड जीवा रिप्रेजेंटेटिव्स हु फंक्शन एज द तम गुण अवतार शिवा इन ईच आवर यूनिवर्स सो देयर इज अ सदाशिव हु इज द ओरिजिनल शिवा हु रिसाइड्स इन द यू नो देयर इज अ विरजा एंड देन देयर इज द महाकाल लोक हाफ इज इन द material realm and half is sadashiv lok and in that sadashiv resides and the shiva who is a jiva and this jiva is the tamagun avatar this shiva uh, gets his you know empowerment from sadashiv it is like the post of brahma which is like the post of brahma so brahma also gets his uh, you know empowerment to do the creation from again vishnu itself so this uh, jiva is uh, sorry the shiva is like a post just like brahma is also a post if no jiva is fit to occupy these post then sadashiv himself takes these roles of shiva similarly if there is no jiva is qualified to take up the post of uh, brahma <clears throat> vishnu himself takes up the post he is bhagavat he is directly the lord only he might take up directly the post in madhura kadamni chapter 3 vishnu chakra thakur notes the following lord narayan is neither under the control of maya nor in touch with her this is the position of narayan ishwar he is neither under the control of maya nor in touch with her Shiva is not under the control of Maya, but he is in touch with her. So this is the difference between Shiva and uh, Narayan. Shiva is also Ishwar. He is not under the control of Maya, but he is in touch with Maya because for doing the creation, he uh, has union the Shiva and the Linga. <laughs> Linga is uh, Durga. Shiva is Yoni. and because of the creation happens so he is in touch with her but he is please remember is not under the control of maya the jivas are both under the control of maya and are and in touch with her this is distinction between narayan sadashiv and the jivas so this is the distinction now vishwanath chakra thakur goes quite into detail in the madhur kamandamni explaining that and i will just again briefly discuss that now the mother coming is the picture uh, he discusses i am just going to briefly discuss the chaitanya tattva the ontology of sentient beings chaitanya means those who are sentient so there are two types of sentient beings independent dependent <clears throat> the supreme consciousness the individual consciousness the individual consciousness is dependence on the supreme consciousness so the independent consciousness they are all pervading lord and the dependent are the minute living entity who pervades in the body only so among the independent is both narayan and shiva narayan and so on and all the avatars vishnu tatvas they are beyond the touch of maya they are ishwar shiva is also ishwar please remember maheshwar he is called <clears throat> who accept the touch of maya for leela so this was also the footnote which was mentioning if you remember that narayan is neither under the call, control of maya nor touch shiva is also not under control of maya but he is in touch so this is the difference between uh, shiva and narayan so this is independent now we come to dependent not covered by ignorance but there are those who are covered by ignorance so those who are covered by ignorance are the demigods humans birds and beasts those who are liberated <clears throat> from avidya they are not covered by ignorance among these <clears throat> there is two categories so now 
category invested with the lord's aishwarya shakti they are invested with support some aishwarya shakti of the lord and in that there is categorization invested with the gyan shakti an aspect of transcendence such as the four kumaras the four kumaras are invested with the lord's gyan shakti invested with the shrishti an aspect of maya such as lord brahma lord brahma is invested with the shrishti shakti to do the shrishti and then in this category not invested with the lord's aishwarya so these are the gyanis who merge in the brahman so they are not invested with the lord's aishwarya shakti and then there are the bhaktas who relish the sweetness of the names forms qualities and pastimes or shri bhagwan which is laudable this is deplorable those who are gyanis who merge in the brahman so this is the categories of uh, sentient beings independent consciousness dependent consciousness and these are the ishwars narayan who is controller of maya and beyond maya and not in touch with maya but shiva he is mm -hmm. controller of maya but he is in touch and within the dependent not covered by ignorance covered by ignorance and not covered by ignorance is again invested in the potency of the lord gyan shakti priya shakti shishti shakti not invested the gyanis who merge and the bhaktas who relish only the sweetness of the lord now why does you know uh vishwanath chakra thakur gives this whole categorization what is the reason <laughs> what is the reason he gives this categorization anyone think about it it's little difficult i know but still why does he go into this whole classification of independent consciousness dependent consciousness and in that different different levels what is the reason the answer was given by bhakti nath thakur in his explanation but uh, i'm just giving a hint anyone what is the reason uh, vishwanath chakra thakur goes into this yes birendra yadav prabhu ji har ek sna prabhu dandav pranam प्रभु दिस कैटेगराइज विद दिस कैटेगराइजेशन वी कैन अंडरस्टैंड द पोजीशन ऑफ डेमी गॉड्स एंड लॉर्ड शिवा सो दैट वी कैन नॉट इक्वेट देम विद लॉर्ड एंड वी कैन नॉट टेक देम एज अ इंडिपेंडेंट ऑफ लॉर्ड दिस कुड बी यस यस एग्जैक्टली वी कैन नो द पोजीशन ऑफ द लॉर्ड एंड इवन द डेमी गॉड्स एंड द जीवास दिस इज वेरी गुड वेरी गुड आंसर also based on their level we can respect them sakale sammana korite shakti deho nata yata yata so we will not carry misconceptions and consider you know uh, even those who are invested with the lord aishwarya as you know supreme no because of understanding the clear understanding no they are dependent consciousness but they are not covered by maya so understanding all these different categorizations help us to understand they are each of their levels that how ultimately they are dependent on the supreme lord and we can respect them as per their level of consciousness so that's the reason vishnu chakra thakur does that okay yahar hari naam aashre kare na taha der से रूपे भेद ज्ञान के प्रकृष्ट रूप त्याग करा कर्तव्य दोलीम गॉड बींग इंडिपेंडेंट ऑफ द सुप्रीम पर्सनैलिटी ऑफ गॉड बिकॉज वी सॉ चैतन्य द ऑन्टोलॉजी दट एवरी वन कॉन्शियसनेस इज डिपेंडेंट ऑन द लॉर्ड कॉन्शियसनेस दे आर ऑल डिपेंडेंट कॉन्शियसनेस एंड अंडरस्टैंडिंग दैट we can give up 
this bhed gyan and we can take shelter of the holy name so that is the reason so this is in brief uh, uh, bhaktanu thakur's discussion on the second offense and the remedy for this offense is what we already discussed understanding this tatva the ontology ontology means the nature of existence of things understanding and having clear knowledge about this tatva <clears throat> about uh, the existence of the demigods the existence of the supreme lord how he is beyond the control of maya <clears throat> how he is maya desh and how the jiyas are maya vash and especially understanding specially with shiva because this is the misconception which even the followers of vedas have and we know there in the vishnu kanchi there is kanchi puram there is vishnu kanchi and shiva kanchi <laughs> in vishnu kanchi the worshippers of vishnu they glorify him as supreme and they deride shiva shiva the shiva say that no oh, shiva is, they deride vishnu so both are offenders <laughs> And when Nityanand Tru went to uh, uh, Kanchipuram, he saw their arguments, and then immediately he started laughing. He started laughing. <laughs> so that's what. Then we'll not commit this offense. So uh, having this proper samandha gyan is the remedy of rectification that we have already discussed uh, in our brief discussion about this. So, any questions regarding now the second offense which we discussed? Okay, there is one question. Yes, uh, Birendra Yadav Prabhuji. Hare Krishna Prabhu Dandatna. Just wanted to know. Uh, in what mode Lord Shiva and uh, other demigods are supreme personified? In what mode? In what mode Lord Shiva and other demigods serve the Lord Krishna? In what mode they see? But you may be in Dasa or Vatsali Madhuri. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yes, yes. <laughs> so that uh, we are not really much aware. But you know, Das is very. You know the standard denominator. Yes, Das is the standard denominator that we have to understand. <laughs> In one of his lectures on the Brahma Samhita, uh, Prabhupada is you know singing the prayers Govinda Madhi Purusham Pramham Bajami, and after that Prabhupada is giving a purport. And <clears throat> in the beginning of creation, Brahma had the darshan of Mahavaikunta. And Narayan spoke him the Chatur Shloki Bhagavatam. He had darshan of Mahavaikunta, remember? And then he continued the creation. And Brahma's 50 years are over now. Brahma lives for Dvi Parardha. One Parardha is over. 50 years of life of Brahma is over. And Brahma's birthday is going on right now. <laughs> it is his birthday. The uh, 50 years and the first day is going on of Brahma now. And how long is one day of Brahma, you know, Sahastra Yuk Paryantam. And in this 50 years of Tapasya, Brahma who is doing devotional service of, you know, uh, doing the creation on behalf of Vishnu, Prabhupada is explaining that in after his birthday in the 50th year, he was revealed Golok Vrindavan. And he saw Shamsundar Krishna and he glorified in his Brahma Samhita, Govinda Madhi Purusham Tamham Vajami. So this Brahma is very special because this Brahma is, you know, worshipper of Krishna in Gokul or Golok Vrindavan. <clears throat> he is not the worshipper of Narayan in Vaikunta. And Prabhupada is mentioning that um, although he had the darshan of Golok and he has glorified that in his prayers and he can read the prayers, the description of Golok is given in the beginning verses of Brahma Samhita. But Prabhupada says that what is Brahma's Swarupa 
and the mood of worship of Brahma that even Brahma doesn't know. <laughs> so Brahma doesn't know. But, you know, one thing is very certain that he is, you know, uh, a worshipper of Shamsundar Krishna in Golok Vrindavan. So that he has attained maturity of his, after his 50 years, you know, of realization. So we should not be much worried about even the demigods' mood or even our mood. <laughs> but the glory of Mahaprabhu's movement is that if we practice sadhana bhakti and, you know, chant the names uh, of the holy names of the Lord without offenses, then our mood, especially when we start the Raganuga Bhakti, will be gradually revealed. <laughs> will be gradually revealed. Basically, the demigods are Mishra Bhaktas. But again, that is not a generalization. Some of the demigods can also be pure devotees. So, the next uh, demigod Indra is going to be uh, Bali, and Bali is a pure devotee of the Lord, as far as I remember. Uh, uh, so now it is Purandar. So he's a Mishra Bhakta. So that's why uh, we might also not criticize the demigods. Oh, criticize demigods are Mishra Bhaktas. Sometimes they can be pure devotees also. So that's our understanding, what we should have. Is it clear? I hope. Any other questions regarding the second offense? Any other questions regarding the second offense? Okay. So now the third offense. This is, you know, especially among the ten offenses, the first and the third offense, the second offense is there, but that is misconception of the tattva. The first and the third offense, one should be very, very careful. And then the seventh offense, committing sin on the strength of the holy name. So now we are taking the third offense. Dishonor of the bona fide spiritual master is an offense to the holy name. Guru Avagya. Now he goes into Guru Tattva, Bhaktanu Thakur. Yaha haite Bhagavat Tattva avagat hoya yaya tini acharya rupi Bhagavan. <laughs> Bhaktanu Thakur is going to speak Guru Tattva. He from whom the truth regarding the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Yaha haite Bhagavat Tattva avagat. Avagat means one who comes to know. Can be understood can be understood is the supreme personality of Godhead in the form of Acharya. Now please mark the statement and uh, any one of you what is Bhaktinath Thakur saying? Who is Guru in one sense? What is Bhaktinath Thakur saying? Anyone, what is actually Bhakti Thakur meaning by this statement? What is he saying by this statement? If you want, you can read it carefully. One hand has been raised. Anyone else? Lakshmi Narsimhan Prabhuji. Sunita Mataji, yes. Yes. Hare Krishna, Dhanur Pranam Prabhuji. It mm -hmm. means that uh, the Acharya or the Guru is a representative of the Lord Himself. Yes, but if you see the statement here, what really, you know, is a statement? You, you mentioned it as, as you know, uh, representative, but if you see Bhaktivinoda Thakur's statement, it is like, he is Bhagavan. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Supreme Personality in of Godhead. In the form of a? Form of Acharya. Acharya. Yes. Acharya Rupi Bhagavan. 
And if you know the Leelamrit, the famous pastime, when Prabhupada started his uh, matchless gift center in the 5th Avenue, New York, and he said, we are going to have initiation. And Prabhupada was every day, uh, three times in a week, taking uh, Bhagavad Gita classes. And he was condemning those who consider themselves as God, especially the Mayavadis. And how we are not God, we are, you know, Jeevas and all. And then some of their disciples, devotees were interested to take initiation. And they came to Prabhupada. And Prabhupada said, you have to accept me as God. <laughs> Prabhupada said that. And they were all in shock. So many days Prabhupada was preaching against it. And Prabhupada himself is saying that, you know, you have to accept me as God. So they were confused. And then they went to one of the senior most disciples of Prabhupada who was in some other place. And they said, this is what, you know, Pro uh, Swamiji dropped a bomb, they said. <laughs> he dropped a bomb. What? He said that we'll have to accept him as God. Then he said, better go and clarify, <laughs> you know, what he meant by that. And they went. And Prabhupada said, because... He is the representative of God. You should treat him as God. <laughs> so here, that is the same statement Bhaktana Thakur is making. Acharya Rupi Bhagwan. He is Acharya Rupi Bhagwan. Now the footnotes will make it all clear. This should be properly understood. Raghunath Das Goswami Prabhu also states in his Manashiksha. Guru Varam Mukund Preshtatvam Smara. Remember that the bona fide spiritual master is dear to Lord Mukunda. Srila Jeeva Goswami Prabhupada notes in his Bhakti Sandarbha, Shuddha Bhakta Stu A.K. Shri Guru Shri Shivasya Cha Bhagavata Sahabheda Drishtim Tat, tat Priya Tama Te Neva Manyante Some pure devotees, Shuddha Bhaktas, however, Consider that viewing the bona fide spiritual master and Lord Shiva as being one with the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Ekatva, seeing them as Eka, is only out of the consideration that they are dearmost to the Supreme Lord. Priya Tama Neveva Manyante, because they are very, very dear to the Lord. That's why they are considered as one. They are as good as like that. That's what. And it also comes up further. Srila Vishwanath points out that though the bona fide spiritual master, a perfect pure Vaishnava, as characterized in the Guru Ashtakam itself, is described in all scriptures and by the saints following the scriptures as being Lord Hari himself. So in the Guru Ashtaka, we chant Sakshad Dharitvena. He is Akshad. Are? This is what also Bhaktivinoda Thakur is saying. But the next line makes it clear. Why he is called Sakshad Hari? Kintu Prabhu Reva Priyaseva. It is however only because he is dear to Lord Krishna, not that he is a Vishnu Tattva expansion of the Lord. Now, this is very clear understanding we should have. Why he is Sakshadhari? <clears throat> Not that he is a Vishnu Tattva, but because he is very, very priya, very, very dear to the Lord. So that is, you know, even in our Guru Ashtakam, Samastha Shastra, all the scriptures declare the Guru to be Sakshadhari. Uptastata Bhava Kintu Prabhur Yaha Priya Deva because he is very, very dear to the Lord. And even in the Manashiksha, it is what? Guru Varam Mukunda Preshtatva Smara. Mukunda Preshtatva is very, very dear to Mukunda, the Guru. So that's why uh, he is considered Acharya Rupi Bhagavan. He is actually God in the form of Acharya. So, this tattva, we should be having very, very clear understanding. Tahake drid bhakti kariya hari name achala shadha lab kara kartavya. So, only when one performs by rendering firm devotional service, drid bhakti unto him, 
one should attain unshakable achala shraddha attachment to the holy name of lord hari lab kara kartavya you will get no unflinching unshakable attachment to the holy name by rendering firm devotional service so this tatva when we understand uh, as you worship the lord supreme personality of order we should worship the spiritual master and by having attachment to him firm devotion to him <clears throat> then what will happen you will attain unshakable attachment to the holy now interesting footnote is there in text 5 of updesham Shri Rupa Goswami notes that one should serve the Vaishnavas and the bona fide spiritual master, a Vaishnava cent percent engaged in the service of Krishna without anarthas. So let's go to Upadeshamrit text 5. Upadeshamrit seems like a very small book, 11 verses, but if you study deeply, just by mastering these seven, 11 verses, you can attain perfection. So in text 5, it is mentioned Krishna Tiyasya Giritam Manasadri Eta Dikshasti Chet Pranata Bishya Bajanta Misham Shushushaya Bajana Vigya Ananya Anya Nindadi Shunya Ridham Ipsita Sangalabhya. So one who is a Madhya Madhikari, he should offer respect to one who takes the holy name. And a Madhya Madhikari should offer respects to one who is engaged in bhajan, who has taken diksha and is engaged in bhajan, intense bhajan. And one who is a bhajan vigya, who is very expert in bhajan and is practicing ananya bhakti and his heart is pure. That means pure devotion. Ipsita. Ipsita means one should desire such association. So, a Madhya Madhikari should desire the Mahabhagavat's association. So, this is what Updesh Amrit text 5 says. That one should serve these bona fide spiritual masters who are Mahabhagavat's, who are pure devotees. Nindhadi <clears throat> Shunya Ridhayal. His heart is pure. No anarthas. And later, in text 7 of the same work, he notes that the holy name of Lord Krishna should be chanted with care and respect. So, text 5 mentioned how one should serve the pure devotee and text 7 mentions and here text 6 mentions that how one should not see faults in the pure devotee. That's what one should not commit apra to the pure devotees. <clears throat> text 6 mentions. But he goes to text 7. Text 7 says, Syat Krishna Madi Charit Charita di Sitapya Vidya Pitto Patapta Rasanasya Naro Chikan Room In Padarat Anudin Kalusaiva Jushta Swadvi Kramat Bhavati Tad Gada Mula Hantrim Hantri. So when one serves the pure devotees and doesn't commit offense to those devotees, pure devotees, then Krishna's name, which is like nectar, sweet nectar. But we are afflicted with jaundice disease. Although we take sugar candy, because we have jaundice, we cannot taste that sugar candy. But Krishna's name is also nectar. We are afflicted with the disease of avidya. But if we chant with other, with great respect, that holy name is not different from Krishna. And every day we do that. Anudhinam. Prabhupada is saying every day and later on he is saying or 24 hours daily. <laughs> 24 hours daily. So this only when you cross the Namaprat stage, you know, your chanting becomes nirantar. Then your, you know, Swadvi, you will start tasting the holy name and the root of avidya will be destroyed from the root. It will be dis the disease will be destroyed. So that's what text seven mentions, right? So now it is understood that the first three texts of Uddesh Amrit deal with Shraddha. So the first three verses of Uddesh Amrit speak about Shraddha. The second three texts deal with Sadhu Sang, and the next verses deal with Bhajan Kriya. 
So text uh, 4, 5 and 6, how Sadhu Sangh has to be taken by Madhya Madhikari. The Madhya Madhikari has to take Sadhu Sangh of the Uttam Madhikaris. And he should not see fault in them and do his bhajan. And if he does his bhajan, then Anarth Nivriti will happen. Since bhajan kriya Anarth Nivriti unless accompanied by Sadhu Sangh and Shraddha it is clear that in order to attain the ability to chant the holy name with care and respect, one is required to serve the bona fide spiritual master, the Vaishnava, sent person engaged in the service of Lord Krishna without anarthas. So here is the secret that if you want to do your bhajan, you have to serve the pure devotee. Now, many might say that, you know, we don't get, you know, association of our spiritual master. But the spiritual master, <clears throat> just like the Lord is all pervading, he is also having that because he is Saksha Tharitvena. So by, you know, in the altar, worshipping the spiritual master as though he is personally present, hearing the instructions of the spiritual master given in the lectures and following those instructions, all that is directly serving the spiritual master. And by that, what will happen? It will, by that kind of association, without any committing offenses, <clears throat> we will, with other, chant the holy names and get deep attachment to the holy names. So this is the secret, what has been revealed here by Vakhtinov Chakyov. So this is, uh, in brief, about, uh, you know, the uh, Guru Avagya. And if uh, by chance one commits an offense to a spiritual master, uh, committing offense to Vaishnavas is a grave offense. But if one commits offense to a spiritual master, it is a very, very grave offense by which your bhakti lata can be uprooted from the root and you will dis you know it will destroy all your whatever you have earned devotional credits. And you might, you know, leave devotional life. So one should be very, very careful. And the same things apply. We had spoken about in the first class that uh, what Vishwana Chakra Thakur says. That one, you know, who commits an offense, uh, one should first burn in the fire of repentance. And go and ask forgiveness from that Vaishnava, pure devotee. And serve that Vaishnava in such a way that it is pleasing to him and ultimately he bestows his mercy anugra. Then only one can become free from that offense. So that is the rectification for the third offense. I hope uh, the third offense discussion is clear. Now any questions on this? Yes, Birendra Yadav Prabhuji. Uh, Hare Krishna Guru Dandatna. Who oh, here? Spiritual master refers to both Siksha Guru, Diksha Guru, both? Yes, very important question. Uh, whether spiritual master refers to both Siksha Guru and Diksha Guru. Now, generally, uh, the Diksha Gurus are the Uttam Adhikaris. But even the Shiksha Guru who is at the level of Uttam Adhikari. That kind of Shiksha Gurus who are at that level, if you are taking Shiksha from them, they are called as the Bhajana Shiksha Gurus. <clears throat> uh, then it is applicable to both of them. This is first thing to be understood. Secondly, uh, anyone who gives Shiksha to us, you know, he is in fact a kind of Shiksha Guru. But you know, in ISKCON, we have the counselor system where there is a counselor and the counselee. And the counselee, uh, sorry, the counselor is maybe practicing 10, 15 years Krishna consciousness. But they might be not so elevated as the Uttamadikaris. Yeah. <clears throat> but they have expertise in understanding the Shastra. They might not be even at the level of Madhya Madhikari for your kind of information. They might be Kanishta Dikaris also. So they are the counselees or your spiritual mentors, what we call. 
So <clears throat> there is a difference. Although they are uh, Shiksha Gurus, but there is difference. So here specifically Shiksha Gurus refers to the Mahabhagavas. And sometimes it is very rare to get uh, even Shiksha Gurus who are on the level of Mahabhagavas. So at that point, it can refer to for both of them. For both of them. So that is uh, uh, what Bhattinu Thakur also speaks. That there is a difference in the Shiksha Gurus. Not all Shiksha Gurus at our, you know, at the level of Mahabhagat. Some are at the Kanishtam level also and in the Madhyamadhyadha level. And somebody who is 10-15 years practicing uh, Krishna consciousness, he might be a little advanced, but still he might be at the Kanishtha level. So that, you know, that kind of discrimination, uh, finer discrimination we should have and understand. Is it clear? Thank you, bro. Thank you very much. Yes. Any other questions regarding the third offense which we have discussed? Okay, so I'll just uh, go to Updesh Amrit because uh, we saw that uh, there is a discussion on you know the first three verses uh, deal with uh, shraddha the next three verses sadhu sangha and the next verse speaks about bhajan kriya and uh, how bhajan kriya will lead to all these higher stages so this question had come up uh, and that's why i'm taking it so that we have a little deeper understanding of deshamrit so, I am just taking this discussion so that we have a still better clear understanding. Now, Uddesh Amrit overview this is Uttama Bhakti. Uttama Bhakti has two divisions, Sadhana Bhakti and Sadhya Bhakti. And within Sadhya Bhakti is Bhava Bhakti and Prema Bhakti. And within Sadhana Bhakti is Vaidhi Bhakti and Raganuga Bhakti. Vaidhi Bhakti and Raganuga Bhakti. Now, uh, having understood this, verses 1 to 7 deal with Vaidhi Sadhana Bhakti. So, verses 1 to 7 are speaking about Vaidhi Sadhana Bhakti. Only the 8th verse, only one verse, you know, Rupa Goswami is dealing with Raganuga Bhakti. And 9, 10 and 11 are speaking about Bhava Bhakti. Now, let's come to Bhaktivinoda Thakur's uh, analysis of each of these verses. He says that Vachu Vegam is, you know, speaking of two kinds of Adhikaris. One is one who is a Madhyam Adhikari. A Madhyam Adhikari is one who has already controlled these urges. He is not under the control of Vegas. And it is also speaking of a Tridandi Sanyasi. That is a Uttam Adhikari. Uttam Adhikari has not only controlled his senses, but he can control the disciple's senses by his instructions and by his love. The love, the spirit, the disciples have love for the spiritual master, and that's why they surrender to the spiritual master. So he's not able to control his own reins, but he's able to control the reins of this disciples also. <laughs> so that's the difference between a Madhyamadhikari and a Uttamadhikari. So, first thing we should remember that. As long as one is battling with the Vegas, he is a Kanishta Dikari. <laughs> Only when you master the Vegas, you become a self-controlled Madhyam Adhikari. That means you are attained the stage of Shraddha. Shraddha means Sarva Dharman Paritajya. Pure Shraddha we are speaking. So, these verses, the first three verses are dealing with Shraddha. And Sharnagati means Anukulesa Sankalpa Pratikulesa Varjanam. So, what is Pratikul to Bhakti? What is Anukul to Bhakti? Are spoken in two and three verses. And if you remember, uh, in the footnotes, it was mentioned four, five, and six speak of Sadhu Sangha. So, how we should associate with devotees? Sad with Preeti Lakshanam is spoken in verse four. And how we should associate with the Kanishta, Madhyam, and Uttam? Only a Madhyam Adhikari can first identify who is a Kanishta, who is a Uttama. 
and based on that he will respect accordingly that is association madhyam adhikari trivid sevan how does he does seva and this madhyam adhikari when he associates with the uttam adhikari which we just now saw that he has to associate with one who is a sent person pure devotee and he has to serve him and only by serving like that that spiritual master he can attain taste for chanting holy names such a madhyam adhikari he should not see him a uh, uttam adhikari he should not see him with material vision that means he should not commit vashna aparad and then when he takes the name this avidya will be destroyed if he does it adarat and anudinam so shraddha three verses sadhu sang fourth fifth sixth now sadhu sang in this association sadhus you do bhajan also and slowly the anarthas are there anarth nivritti is also happening here hmm? and only when you get taste then you are at nishta and ruchi asakti are spoken in raganubhakta nishta ruchi asakti is here and 9 10 11 is bhava and prema of course there is no discrimination or discretion then that which verse deals with bhava and which verse deals with prema but both are coming sad bhakti 9 10 11 so that's how we can understand this uh, uh explanation of these verses how these first three verses deal with shraddha shraddha means dridh shraddha he has attained shraddha shabde vishwas so dridh nischay krishna bhakti koile sarva karma krita hoye so now as we are hearing krishna katha we are actually accumulating shraddha and our shraddha when it matures and we completely surrender to the lord and the any activities and perform only devotional activities that is the madhyam adhikari platform and then uh, you know all these stages sadhu sangha bhajan kriya apply so this is a little more insight into this because here this footnote was spoken how one should attain firm devotional service uh, to the guru uh, and then he can attain attachment to chanting the holy names so this is a confidential thing Uh, which Bhaktivinoda Thakur is speaking, and in the footnote, this discussion was there, so that's why I went into a little more detail. So, any questions about this discussion? What we had now? I hope it is clear. And do you have any questions or clarifications? Okay, so then we will stop here because the next. Uh, is the fourth offense such shastra nindanam so that we will take up uh, next two two three uh, offenses will take up in the next class shila prabhupad ki jai shila bhaktana thakur ki jai shri hari naam ki jai hari krishna